day to you, you psychotic sycophants, and please allow me to welcome you back once again to the Cradle of Heroes, the Tomb of Legends, Splatterface. Now we are going to get straight to it here. No muss, no fuss, no bloated co-hosts, just a straightforward intro. Having a look out at today's arena, we can see that a mighty fortification stands between our fighters. That impressive structure is the Castle Ring, and I am very eager to see how it'll screw up today's battle. Its watery moat and pillared top should mix things up in a good way, I'm thinking. In fact, I'm counting on it. Now, as for our fighters, in one corner we have that hopping mad jumping Spider-Man, Lord Whitefur. And over across the way, it's that shell-backed snail dressed in leather and mail, Bunyan. Lord Whitefur. Once again being a royal pain in the rump. Never an easy task to get you in the ring, it seems. Apparently, White Fur doesn't feel the very best about going up against a new parent, Bunyan. And we really had to force a guy into the ring today. I mean, sure. It might be distasteful to some to slay a parent and leave their children undefended in a cruel and uncaring world, but I mean, come on. White Fur, you knew very well what you were signing on for when you came here, and you shouldn't be complaining now. It's far too late for such gripes. You know, I'm thinking you should really try to focus your rage. Remember, my friend, you're here for your sister, and you really shouldn't go giving up now. It'd be foolish. Besides, your opponent here looks very eager for today's fight. And with a new brood to care for, there's a lot on the line here for Bunyan, and for Bunyan's reluctant new friend, Shrieking Sounds. Yes, the two have formed somewhat of a friendship after the birth of Bunyan's babes, though I don't think Shrieking is very happy about the fact. She loves a new friend, sure, but after losing her good friend Grunt in the first round, I couldn't blame her reluctance at all. Especially since it was White Fur who killed the ape. Well, Snail, there really is a lot on your shoulders today, and even though both I and the Bastards of Splatterface crave the glory of battle, it would be a damn shame if you fell out there. So you had best give it your all, lest a great many hearts are badly broken. Also, another note here. I think a few of you folks out there might not realize that Bunyan is clothed in bronze mail, pretty much head to toe too. Yeah, that is not snail flesh. It's many hundreds of bronze rings. Something to take into account going into this bout. Now then, I suppose that does it. So prepare yourselves, audience members. Today's fight can end only in heartbreak or terrible upset. So brace yourselves accordingly. And fighters! Prepare yourselves, and let the eighth bout of Splatterface commence. Okay, okay, this seems familiar. Reminded of last bout in the forest ring. The fighters can see each other through those fortifications there, but neither is moving quite yet. Oh, but here goes Bunyan, quickly rounding the fort and heading up to the roof. Okay, white fur stands firm, not moving an inch. Looks like Bunyan has paused before going up. Listening, perhaps. I didn't know snails had ears. Regardless, not going to hear much. White fur is not budging. Bunyan heads up and is back down at ground level, exiting the castle and rounding the moat. And it looks like the fight is going down in a strange place, right next to the castle moat. There they go, a decent back and forth. Bunyan crashes into the spider and white fur tumbles, briefly. Back up now and the fight continues. Being careful, the two are fighting well. Oh, a couple of hits there to White Fur's leg, but he gets Bunyan's hand as he falls. White Fur is now on his knees, but is holding back the snail's surprising onslaught. All right now, oh, Bunyan's flail hand is cut away once again, and Bunyan takes one of White Fur's hands. Icor for Icor, the two begin to scramble, frantic to end the fight in a hurry, maintaining a fair balance here. A minor hit to White Fur. Ooh, and Bunyan jams a dagger into White Fur's boot. White Fur strikes back in a fury, and Bunyan tumbles into the castle moat. Oh, this is gonna be it right here. There is no way Bunyan in their injured state can get out of there. Oh yeah, look at that. Missing a hand, covered in armor, just getting weighed down. Yeah, that's gonna be it, folks. Just gotta wait it out now. The arena can be cruel sometimes, but that's the price of dying a hero here in Splatterface.
Shake it off, stupid snail. You'll be okay. But your fighting days are over. Take care of your babies and don't throw your life away. This is a threat. Well, well, well. Folks, it looks like we have here a noble act of mercy by the maybe not so fierce jumping Spider-Man and also winner of bout eight, Lord Whitefur. Gonna be sure to get a medical crew out there ASAP and pump the water out of Bunyan. And you know what? I'm pretty sure they'll be good soon enough. Hell of a medical crew. Those guys work some wonders. Also, I suppose it wasn't a terribly damaging fight when you get down to it. But yes, our winner. What a kind and noble soul. White Fur, you have shown yourself to be quite the little softy out there, eh? <laughs> it's pretty cute. Shut up. Anywho, congratulations to you, Lord White Fur. Just now getting word in here, and it uh, looks like for your prize, we have a steel breastplate. Wow, that is going to make you a formidable foe indeed, my lord. Oof, yeah. Encased in a suit of steel, you'll be a force to be feared in the coming free-for-all, eh? Well, assuming you can stomach the carnage. <laughs> Such a softy. Shut up! But anyways, wrapping things up now with a peek at our lucky snail, Bunyan, who seems to have lucked out and scored a second chance at life. You know, I'm not too sure who's luckier. Bunyan, or all those little snail babies waiting in back? I will admit, <laughs> I am happy to see Bunyan going home today. Though, I will also admit that this was an outcome I had imagined. Especially after seeing how distraught Whitefur was over putting down Grunt in round one. What a good, kind spider to let that snail live. <sighs> I'm sure those babies would rather have their only parent around instead of a warrior's feast. In fact, that seems like a silly reason to join up in Splatterface when you get down to it, Bunyan. Might have to rethink your priorities a bit. But, you know, for how happy those babies will be, I think the one happiest with this outcome, uh, by far, is Auntie Shrieking Sounds. She now gets to have her good friend and see those babies grow up strong. <laughs> yep, a bunch of winners today. Go goddamn figure, huh? I thought it was gonna end in heartbreak. Well, that's the arena for you. Things are never over till they're over. Remember that. Gonna be moving on here, and once again, we're gonna thank you, Uncle Whitefur. Shut up! Enjoy your prize and prepare for the coming fight. It'll be a tough one for sure. But before we get to that, we have one more bout. A bout between a bulky brute who I'm really hoping goes down, Fogslock, the snapping turtle, versus that noble dwarf and her wonderful axe, Torelnil. My bearded bastards, we've climbed up one hell of a mighty mountain, and the peak lies just before us. If you stop climbing now, you are a fool. Because greatness is at hand, and all we have to do is reach.